So good morning, everyone. And thank you, as always, for being here. And it is my pleasure to greet you all today. And I know you all know this, but um, I want you to know that we have been getting some views on uh, YouTube. So every week I'm going to say, I am Reverend Dr. Candace Beckett, and it's my great joy to welcome you here today. I know that somewhere in this service, whether it's in the treatment or the music or the message, you will receive exactly what you are looking for, what your heart is seeking. So please sit back, relax, and join us in just receiving a greater truth today. Our opening treatment will be given by Jack Hall. So Jack, take it away. Good morning. So I welcome you all to take a deep breath and go within and know with me. There we are. There is only one presence, one life force that is expressing itself with perfection and magnificence and an abundance beyond imagination. I know it expressing as all that we here experience, both personally and in our day-to-day -day life and shared experience and the greater experience of this planet. So in this human journey, as in a perfect expression of the one divine spirit, the one intelligent mind, being all, I know right now that at the core of it all, that light, that divine wisdom is where I choose to center myself in each moment. And for me, it expresses as love. It is that deeper inner expression within me, that deeper voice that is always there. And it is out of that love expression of life, being life, that there is no limitation, no disconnection, no lack. For in this place, I am fully in life. And I choose moment to moment to exercise that muscle of connection of oneness with all that I experience within my own self and with everyone whom I experience this beautiful life here on this amazing planet. And when I do that, life is good. Life is very good. That there is a flow, a grace and ease, a symmetry, a connection, that washes away all that is in my human mind, the not, the fear, and is a healing bomb, an empowering, life-giving, ever-present connection to the one and to my own life now. And it is through this that I choose to express. And I know for this day and this time, everything is perfectly expressing and we are each centered in that one divine, loving, beautiful, empowering, connected, expansive space of God and spirit. So I am so grateful for this knowing. I know that as I speak these words, as I know these thoughts in my day-to-day -day moment, that in an instant I can change it, and it is so. So in that consciousness, I know this is perfectly expressed for each and every one of us and for me. And I know it is so. And I release this with gratitude and love. Always in love with life. 
And so it is. And so it is. Oh, thank you, Jack. That was amazing. Um, and I now want to have our, our opening song, which is going to be sung by Madge Strong. So Madge, take it away. Okay. Um, <clears throat> can I screen share? No. No? Would, oh. would you? The last time we screen shared, we really, it, it ended up, it was only you for the whole service. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Yeah. All right. Well, I won't then. <clears throat> How? <laughs> uh, but if you catch on to these words, you can sing along. The other song I'm going to sing later is much easier to sing along with. However, this song was born almost exactly one month ago. Um, and I'm sure all of you heard Amanda Gorman's um, beautiful poem at the inauguration. And Lee, Leah Morris, who's a wonderful songwriter in Oakland, was inspired and wrote this song <clears throat> that very next day um, from taking some of the beautiful words of Amanda Gorman and turning them into this song. It's called Be the Light. <clears throat> there is always a light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light when we are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise your eyes in the dark of night, to climb this hill, together we will. There is always light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light when we are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night, to climb this hill, together we will shine your light in the darkness, shine your light in the darkness, let your bright heart burn out loud and be a gift in the world, shine your light in the darkness, Your bright heart burn out loud and be a gift in the world. There is always a light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light when we are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night. To climb this hill, together we will be the light. That was great, Madge. Thank you so much. What Actually, her, her recording of it has five parts. There's echoes, there's harmonies. It's it's really fabulous. So uh, if you want to Google Lee, L-E-A Morris, and uh, listen to her own multi-layered recording of this. It's it's really like what I did times five. <laughs> Thank you, it was lovely. So hi again, everyone. Um, so I had a really nice week last week, mostly because I did my best to attend as much of, as possible of CSL's virtual conference. Now this is their uh, annual business conference that usually, you know, there's a business meeting, but then there's, you know, several days of great speakers and wonderful music. And um, they do a virtual service, or they have done this um, every other year for a while, but this year they really kind of pulled out the stops because we, we were supposed to have a face-to-face -face this year, and of course, no, this is virtual. 
Um, but it was uh, for me because of my <laughs> day job right now, which is mostly running David back and forth to appointments. Um, I couldn't really do a lot of what they had to offer. There were tons of workshops and really wonderful things, but I was able to attend all of the general sessions, including the business meetings. So I did get to hear about where CSL is over the last year, which uh, was encouraging to say the least. It was very encouraging. Um, and I wanted just to say, just listening to at the very beginning, kind of what the intention for the four days uh, was going to be about. I think they more than hit their mark and it was really amazing. So I wanted to try to give you a brief recap, uh, just so you know, because one of the things that CSL is, is part of their vision and their mission is to be inclusive and to honor diversity. So they really put that into action with how they planned this week. So every night, the general session was hosted from a different center, which was all over, <laughs> all over the country. They had different people emceeing, and then they were bringing other groups in um, every night, just, so, just to kind of broaden and broaden and see who we were internationally. So for instance, the first night, the hosting center was CSL Kauai, which um, Reverend Rita and, and Reverend Patrick, what, they were just amazing. It was, they've been there eight years. It was amazing. They had someone below the conch shell to start, like that's how we started the whole week was with this conch shell and this amazing Hawaiian chant. And there was hula dancers and their choir uh, just kind of cracked us all up. You could see it in the chat. Uh, was barefoot. And the only shoe kind of thing I saw, I think I saw one person in flip flops out of all the people, all the moving parts for, for Kauai. But uh, they spoke, it was wonderful to hear their experience and how they got to Hawaii and move on. But then when they were finished, uh, they introduced the next speaker who was in Denver. And it was the person who is the new general manager, Reverend Sonia Burns uh, spoke. And then the next speaker was Edward Fulion, who is the spiritual leader right now and the senior minister at the CSL Santa Rosa. Great, wonderful, inspirational talk. The next night, the hosting center was CSL Calgary, so Calgary, Alberta. And um, the music director is actually there, was the music director for the entire conference, Amy Bishop. And you guys should all go. You could probably just go to YouTube and look for Amy Bishop. She's just amazing. Uh, they also, they brought in a team speaker, which is Zoe Zielinski, who is somebody is, who's currently in team leadership. And, uh, but the, there was a speaker and she, it was more of a power talk. It was pretty short. And this woman has received uh, her practitioner license through the Calgary Church but she's actually a native of Kenya. So she was doing her talk from CSL Kenya. <laughs> so it was very exciting. There was music that night from one of the soloists from CSL Mexico City. Um, and they also brought in um, a CSL Temple of Light, which is in Kingston, Jamaica very different choir experience than what we saw from Kauai, but really fun, really amazing. Um, the next night, it was coming from Rio Grande CSL, which is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And one of those speakers was zooming in from Lima, Peru. Her entire presentation was in Spanish. So we all got, or all us English speakers got the experience of reading the subtitles. <laughs> And she was brilliant. She was wonderful. Uh, and the last night, the host center was Ahava CSL, which is in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, again, there was an amazing talk from the a senior minister in Oakland, California. There's several churches in Oakland, but one of those. And she was just amazing. 
And then the, the one that um, I think I was most happy because this is actually a friend of mine who's recently taken the center, came from CSL uh, Chiang Mai, which is in Thailand. So we got to see a great range of centers from all over the world, got to hear people. Um, there was just such inclusiveness as far as, um, you know, everything, you know, the, the everything felt very equal and yet and diverse. So lots of um, uh, talks from not white people, Americans, <laughs> it was great. So I just loved it. And I could go on and on and on just about my experience, but I have something to share that was really one of the first, from the first night. So my topic today is follow the leader. And as I said, that leader would be our spiritual leader. It would be Reverend Dr. Edward Fillion. And his talk so moved me and I was like, yep, this guy's my spiritual leader. I really loved it. So I wanna share with you some of the things that he had to say um, because they've, I think that this, this is the kind of thing we start to get to know deeper on deeper and deeper levels and makes a big difference for us. So he began his talk with a quote from one of my favorite teachers, which is Reverend Helen Street. And it goes something like, like this. My mind is a center of conscious awareness within that creative field we call divine mind. Let me say that again. My mind is a center of conscious awareness within that creative field we call divine mind. So in other words, we have this infinite creative field that is responding to our every thought. In fact, we are in the center of it. It goes out infinitely in all directions and right where I am, right where you are is a center point. And this creative mind, this divine mind is responding to every thought, to every word that we're saying. So consider my mind, your mind, is a solution generator that is at the very hub of the creativity of our world. And by virtue of its, of, of its location, it within the thing itself, within God, we are all hardwired to God, intelligence, wisdom, love, and we can't be disconnected ever. It is responding to every thought, positive or negative. It doesn't make a judgment if it's good for us or not. It just responds. So I think most of us that have been around at all, we, we recognize that that is a truth and that this is true for us, whether we like it or not. In fact, there was this wonderful minister um, probably in the 80s and 90s. Her name was Mary Tompkins. And she used to say that this was the horse pill of metaphysics. Because it's not just when we're thinking good thoughts that the universe responds. It's all thoughts. And you're creative. And we need to start paying attention to what we're thinking about. So as Edward was talking about all of this, it occurred to me that because your mind also has this availability to create and the ability, not just the availability, but the ability to create, I am fascinated by what you might be thinking right now. Because what you are thinking right now is creating something for you, for me, and for our world. So positive or negative, just check in. What is in my mind right now? And see what you're thinking. Edward also shared a story about um, polio. And he started with the, the idea of imagine a world without polio. And the point is, is someone did imagine that. 
you know, 30, 40 years ago, started thinking maybe more, started thinking about what could the world look like if, if we could eradicate polio. And Rotary International picked up that challenge. So at, even at that time, uh, that was like somewhere around, Edward said, 1.2 million Rotarians, I guess. <laughs> they're called. And, um, and they all started co to consider that, to consider that idea of what, what can we do? Let's imagine what would the world look like without polio? So as of today, 30, 40 years later, there is still work to be done. Polio does still exist. However, in 2020, a year that for many of us felt like nothing good was happening and it was a very dark place, in 2020, polio was wiped out on the continent of Africa. Now, this speaks to the sanctity of Black lives. And in the meantime, in the United States and, and a lot of other places all over the world, we are also looking at the sanctity of Black lives. You know, speak their name. And I really, um, I can't really speak all the names, you know, I, and, and, but what I know is with all of this that has been going on with us here in the United States and are working toward greater equality within um, who we are as different people, it's, it's really important to remember how we got here and why we got here. So most of us are far more aware of the racial inequity in the United States than maybe we ever were. Even though we knew about it, we've become really conscious. It's like we've received this wake up call. And so many, many of us are moving to do whatever we can to stop that. However, while being aware and involved, we must also remember the rest of the world and what else is going on. We can no longer be indifferent. Indifference is a very, very cruel mindset. The people of faith, which we are people of faith, you and me, we cannot, we must not be indifferent. And we must include in our working to improve, we must also include the good things, the victories, the advances that have happened. In other words, as we work for greater equality, we must also greet the polio news with celebration. Instead, it was kind of dismissed. I never heard about it at all until Edward brought it up. In, uh, in his talk, he talked about a CNN reporter who was reporting on the eradication of polio in Africa. And he stated that the majority of humans on the planet just weren't paying attention to the good news thus often ignoring any progress that we, make, that we make. Well, being aware of the really, really hard stuff that's going on, and there's a big old long list, we must also fill our minds with stories of hope. So why do we need to fill our minds with stories of hope? Because as we also allow the hopeful, the, the celebratory to come in along with where work needs to be done, we get better at what we practice. So let's also practice celebration, not just the hard work. There was a study done by uh, Stanford University called the Unstore Dawn Project. And it was, Kind of for me, the way I interpret this, this study is, is how out of touch we can be. And what they did during this study was they brought in groups of people and, or you know, one at a time and they showed participants pictures 
and ask them to seek out a certain thing within the pictures. So in one case, they asked them to find all the blue dots. And so they were doing that. And in another group where they had different pictures, they were asking them to look for people or look for threatening faces. So, and it wasn't just one, one picture. They started with a picture and then they brought up another one. And pretty soon with the blue dot one, for instance, there were fewer and fewer blue dots on the picture. So there was less for them to find. But what happened was they kept looking for blue dots anyway, even seeing other dots that weren't really blue and calling them blue, even though they weren't. As for the one with the threatening faces, as there were fewer and fewer threatening faces on the page, the people started to, ident to identify less and less threatening faces as threatening faces. So the bottom line here in both of those uh, studies was that the participants were looking for what they were told to look for, even when it really um, wasn't there anymore. They kept looking for it. And I think a lot of us know the, the statement, you don't see things the way they are, you think, see things the way you are. So again, what are you looking for? Is it something you were told to look for? Because you know the media, both the you know news reporting that we receive and social media, and lots of other entertainment venues, are telling us to look for something. And it's you know it's an interesting idea to think about. What am I? What am I being instructed to look for? And then is that what I really want to look for? And so my short answer is I want to look for the good. I want to look for the positive. Even when I'm doing the hard work, even when I'm doing the stuff that's difficult, I want to, to look beyond what is absolutely present in this moment to a result that is going to bring greater good to me, to the planet, to all concerned. So here's something, in 2020, there were less plastic bags and plastic utensils being dumped into oceans and landfills. And some of that was due to a woman, her name is Sheila Morovati. Morovati? She has a dream. She has a vision of stopping the use of one-time use plastic. So in 2020, partly because of her and partly because of uh, a couple of organizations that she's involved in, there was somewhere around 150 nations that either banned or started to heavily tax single-use plastics. So that's a good thing. It's a hard thing, but it's a good thing. Also in 2020, there is carbon emissions drop. 17%. Now that may not last because we don't have a structure for as we come out of the pandemic, there is no plan to keep emissions down. But what it does show is the possibility. And people are starting to consider different ways of traveling, of transportation in general. And so that's, that's good news. And we we know we still have a long way to go, but to honor and celebrate those moments, that's important. So what are you imagining in your life? Yes, there are things uh, to do, and there are things that just are the way they are right now, but as regular people doing what we can, we can move ourselves, our communities, our planet forward in very positive ways. So how? Um, I think for a lot of us, and some of you I, I know because you've shared, 
we need to adopt a cause. And this is just, it's very personal. What is it that you want to do? And then you can donate, like donate money, donate time, uh, donate expertise. And, and when we adopt a cause, what is also really important is then to show up um, and do the work, kind of the on the ground volunteer work. So there's so many things just in our community that I can list, you know, food for everyone, economic stability, home, homes for everyone, clean water, the list goes on and on and on. But even if, what, what is there that is speaking to you that you would like to see and imagine what the result is, even if you don't have the slightest idea on how to do it, this is an important step to allow yourself to have a vision, to see a greater outcome and a greater world just right here in Ukiah, you know? Because here's what I know, a vision, another word, but in a, a strong intention, a great imagination moves us, stirs us to action. And when we start to do some action, the other thing that happens is then we begin to speak a, a different kind of truth about whatever it is we're working on. We can become advocates for that which is better, that which is greater, that which will work for a world that works for everyone. I think it really has become time to risk seeing a better world. It feels like, you know, what would the alternative be? But yeah, let's risk it. Instead of joining in to the, to the choir that will tell you how terrible and how awful things are, to also look beyond that and find something that you can be a part of to reach in and do some good work. And as the Mandalorian says, this is the way. So let us do that. Other interesting thing that, that came up um, in Edward's talk was he was talking about a Russian report and there was a, a news agency channel something in Russia and they decided to report uh, that everything that they reported had to have a positive outcome. So a positive outcome to every story. Now, some weren't hugely positive. Some were just talking about potential but everything ended with a positive note. And here's what I thought was the interesting part. Um, and this is a, you know, uh, an American reporter reporting on this. He said, virtually no one wanted that. And within and by, you know, even the Russians themselves said, you know, nobody really wanted to tune in. And as they moved forward doing this kind of reporting, they had less and less viewers, so they stopped. Well, I felt bad about that, and here's what I know. I want that. I want big dreams, happy endings, uh, positive ways to move through what feels like a really scary and dangerous time. And in the meantime, if you are struggling to dream big, challenged to find hope, that's okay. But here's a, here's a suggestion. If you fall in that category, I don't know if I'm ready to dream big. I don't know if I can look and find hope in some of these really terrible situations. Here's what you can do. You can reach out for support. And in, in our teaching right here, you can turn to a practitioner, but if you maybe want to stay a little bit more anonymous and um, you can tune into the CSL's World Ministry of Prayer and you can go to csl.org and find Ministry of Prayer and you can actually put in prayer requests and a practitioner will be in touch with you to discuss things. Kind of the bottom line though to remember is that we are here for one another and we are here for the world. 
So let's make sure that, that we are moving in that direction and that what we're doing is adding to the celebratory, to the upliftment as we see ourselves in a more inclusive and diverse uh, planet. It's, it's exciting for me. So I'm gonna close the message by reading a passage from um, a book called The Quiet Answer. The book is, is, uh, was written by Hugh Prather. And he says, who really knows the effect of one happy thought? Is it, po is it possible it circles the globe finding entry into any open heart, encouraging and giving hope in some unseen way. I am convinced it does. And whenever I'm truly loving, I feel the warmth and presence of the like-minded, a growing family whose strength lies in their gentleness and whose message is in their treatment of others. So take a deep breath and let it out. And join with me in this treatment. Today, I recognize for myself and for everyone here the power and energy of life radiating everywhere. I call this life energy God. And I see it everywhere, inspiring powerful activity and divine wisdom with love and inclusion for all parts of life truly creating a world that works for everyone according to a divine blueprint for good. Gratefully, together we acknowledge that this life energy has created us all as its, as its expression in a beautiful variety of colors, shapes, sizes, personalities, a myriad differences, all bound together with a divine substance, what we call love. Together we claim for each one our perfect next steps in this life energy that animates us. Spirit inspired, we are open to heed the call as it calls us forward along into greater depths of this exciting adventure of life. I celebrate that our connection with that source energy always knows just what is our next step and we joyfully say yes. Listening, heeding, following that guidance leads us forward into a joyous adventure of greater good than we have yet imagined for ourselves and all others. This good includes everyone. And as it flows through us, we receive its blessing and the world is blessed in return. I know that this is happening now within our center here in Ukiah, within all the centers throughout our beloved organization and throughout the world. I know it to be true for all of us and we bless and are blessed for we recognize that each of us is a blessing. In deep gratitude, 
I release these words into a law that knows how to manifest them into form. So for myself, for all others gathered here, and for all beings everywhere, known and unknown, seen and unseen, great and small, I accept who and what we are, for I know that we are all God. And I let this be so, and so it is. So another deep breath. <clears throat> so now is the time for our offering. Um, so uh, if you would please say with me, <laughs> divine love through me blesses and multiplies this gift. With all my heart and with all my mind, I know that I'm saying yes to something I value. With all others present here, we dedicate these gifts to the values and visions we share. Okay, so we just have a couple of announcements and well, actually we just have one really. Uh, the collection of, of good stuff for building bridges continues. Uh, and as you know, you can drop off your items with Teresa, or you can drop them off at uh, Trudy Morgan's. And in the newsletter, there's uh, an address for Trudy. She's actually one of the directors down at the at Building Bridges. Um, and you can't just leave on her porch, but you, you can uh, call her or Teresa, and they'll be willing to take your stuff and take it down. or you can take the direct, your uh, donations directly to the center. And when you get there, you just call and someone will come out and get them. So it's still pretty uh, much, you know, hands-free. So pretty safe, pretty safe thing to do. So that's really it. Other than I uh, will looking forward to seeing all of you here again next week. Um, just love you all so much. And so we're going to have a closing song from Madge. So Madge, you want to take it away? Um, so I just put the words for this song. Um, Love is all there is. And uh, it's by Harmony Grisman. And I put it in the chat. So I don't have to screen share, but you can go to the chat and see the words if you'd like to sing along, which I highly recommend. Uh, and it's so uh, kind of perfect with what Candace was just saying. <laughs> well, Love is who we are. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that happens quite often. <laughs> and I'll do it a few times. So if you don't get it the first time, we'll do it maybe three times. It's short. quite simple. I'm here to love, to breathe love in, to breathe love out. That's why I'm here. Love is who we are. 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 really quite simple. I'm here to love, to breathe love in, to breathe love out. That's why I'm here. Love is who we are. 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 One more time. I know who I am. I'm here to love, to breathe love in, to breathe love out. That's why I'm here. Love is who we are. Love is
is who we are. Love is who we are. Love is who we are. Love is who we are. That's oh, a love mantra. You so much, Please. <laughs> Thank you. That was a great, great, great song. <clears throat> so I love you all. And I'm so happy that you are all here to make my day this much better. I am mm -hmm. in absolute joy and praise and feel so blessed. So thank you all so much for joining in and I'll see you next week. Namaste. Namaste.